Good day, everyone. When I was asked to come and speak here, I just thought about what is that one inspiring thought that I could leave with you all from my life's journey so far. So I just thought 23 years ago, when I passed out of SDM IMD, what was my thought that was going on in my mind? And if I had written a letter to myself, what would it read like? So it would say, today I'm stepping out into an IT career with lots of dreams to grow and shine. I'm joining an IT company which is facing a dot-com bust. My pay package has been cut. I've been delayed start and I'm joining as an intern. So I don't know how the future is going to be. Am I going to make it big? But I'm here to grow and shine. I will gain a good salary package and gain a lot of valuable experiences. I'm wishing myself lots of success and growth in years to come. Well, obviously I didn't write that letter at that point in time. So I took an opportunity now to write a letter to my younger self 23 years ago to share what I have been through, what's the wisdom, where I have come thus far. And this is how this reads. Dear Rupa, you've come a long way in the last 23 years. You've had the fortune of working with large MNCs, startups and NGOs across various domains, countries and cultures. The learning you've gained in these years have been immense. You have had a growing career, though in breaks. And each hiatus has given you an opportunity to learn, grow, immerse yourself in newer technologies, and gain from diverse cultures and domains of experience. With a loving and supportive family and two sets of parents by your side, uh, you have learned to embrace life as it unfolds every moment. And you believe the universe is generous to hold your growth holistically. Well, as you see, the two messages, the expectations, the outcomes have not been the same. Life's trajectory is such, you may not really face or get an outcome or a path that you desire. But the best is, what do you make out of every situation? How do you grow with where, where you are? How best you make with your situation? And how do you take it to the next level? And my biggest asset all this while that's helped me is my ability of learning to learn. And this is not just restricted professionally. I've been able to grow personally, emotionally, and above all, spiritually. It's been a holistic journey so far. So why is learning to learn so important? Why is it essential? So the entire world is changing, industry is transforming, the job roles that we knew a few years ago is probably obsolete, and industries in a few decades from now is totally transformed in the AI world. In this, if anybody is going to thrive, are the ones who can learn, make the best, and unlearn and relearn. So if you want to give an asset or a learning to yourself while you're here, I would say cultivate the mindset for learning to learn. Uh, I would like to take back you to one of my experiences way back in 2005 with a company called Gigrahak Mobility Solutions. Now this was an e-commerce company and it was new, the whole space was new at that point in time. And they had built a mall on the mobile. What's second nature to us today we do Amazon, Flipkart, Misho. This was actually India's first mall on the mobile. Working on mobile handset phones, the button phones, when we had not heard of Android phones, touch phones, iOS, no UPI payments, no digital financial payments, uh, no fraud checks, really out of its time, but had to work in every kind of handset because there's no standardization. We're talking about a Nokia 4 series, a 6 series, N series, a Samsung or an LG, each phone behaving differently. So at this point, I think if you stepped into our IT startup company, it probably looked like a mobile repair shop than really an IT company. What was new for me, though I was six years into the industry, while I knew IT architecture and integrations, I have managed about 33 merchant integrations, something like IRCTC or Make My Trip or Kingfisher. Well, all of this was known. For me, the entire e-commerce space, the end-to-end -end service delivery that I had to manage, everything was new. So we had to track every single transaction, did a ferns and petals cake and flower bouquet reach on its time. The customer is calling us on our call center to figure out what's going on with their orders. So literally for me, the whole space was picking up the complete new uh, skill set. And that's when I realized what worked yesterday will not work today or tomorrow. So you've got to keep 
reshaping yourself, picking up new things as the situation demands. One funny incident though is we were uh, literally all of us were working more than 14 hours a day but it never felt like a job because reaching 1 million customers at that point in time in a B2C was immensely uh, joyous for us. And uh, to the amount of tracking every transaction, one day one uh, team member came up and said, oh, we have a fraudulent transaction. I looked up the name and that's my husband's name. I'm like, why do you say so? Ma'am, this person has booked a Bangalore Delhi flight for 6 a.m. and again a Bangalore flight, Delhi flight, again for 6 p.m. How is that possible? So all I knew at that point in time, he's not returning home for dinner. So we'll figure out what, how our user experience can be made better. So, um, so that, that's about really what's essential and how I learned without learning with every new job that I go to, there's no way I can scale up. How does one cultivate this mindset of learning to learn? So three things have worked for me in my experience. I'll share some examples. It's like the car that's helped me drive through in my journey. It's curiosity, adaptability, and reflection. Curiosity, I'm sure all of you know, you need to ask the right questions, try to understand deeper, and it's always the details or the devil lies in the details. Without being hands-on, without going to details, there is no way you can learn and evolve and explore. And there's not, I'm not constraining this to the course curriculum. Please go outside of the course. Go to wider perspectives, read about philosophy, or even take up a coding class if you're not in systems. But the broader you go, the curious you get, the learning and connection of the dots really helps you. At this time, I have to tell you about my experience way back in 2016. I had this immense urge that I have to give back to the society. I have to go back and do something else. So I joined an NGO and we were uh, into training low income community group, young children. When I say young children, they're early kindergarten children. So I joined, but then I'm clueless. I don't know what does it mean to do even a learning curriculum design. How do you go into a classroom and teach these young kids? And that too in terms of experiential learning. So uh, the whole curiosity in me was I have to learn. I have to figure this out. And actually a part of curiosity is when you ask questions, seek for help. Nobody is judging you. Look for mentors who can guide you. And, and th at this time, all the co-teachers in uh, Tejaswita Trust where I worked, they really helped me out. And for the complete year of teaching towards the end, the last day we were closing that uh, batch, when those kids came and tell, told me, ma'am, we're going to miss you. I was like, okay, every effort that I put was worthwhile. So that also led me the segue into learning assessments and design, which later I pivoted in my uh, life's journey. Uh, the next one is adaptability. So every time what you're doing may not remain constant. So const there are newer opportunities that's going to come, newer changes. You got to be flexible to change and adapt. Uh, for me, um, like I said, journey has been in breaks. I've been full-time homemaker and mother for both my children. And every time I've spent about two, three years at home, I'm fidgety. What do I do next? Am I dated? How do I get back to industry? So at every point, I had to think, how else can I bring back value so that I'm not out of touch? So this is when, at the end, it passed six years back, after my second one, I did my master's in data science, and that helped me change my career path into complete data analytics and data science. Um, the, the last one, but the most important one that's worked for me is reflection. Whether it's a failure or a success, any internship project, any job that I've done, taking me time, figuring out what worked, what did not, how could I've done something better? Or if someone else was good, what are they doing better? Reflecting on it really helps. It helps you see what else you can improve on. And that's the only way that you can see how to go forward. See here, I have to tell you where my very first work experience, uh, where I did my first large scale, large scale implementation in a major bank in Mumbai. So we were actually moving the entire customer's ERP system from a four generation language, like after COBOL and everything, there was Pro 4. So this was a four GL language code based platform. We were moving them to a Java based, beautiful looking web based platform. So we go there, four of us, we launch it day one. At the end of the day evening, there is chaos. All the users just revert back the release. We are in no place to go back and release and revert it. It's impossible because we've changed the entire architecture. 
So now we are like, oh, we spent so much time on the design board. We have done such a beautiful looking platform. This, this cannot be the case. And then we said to the customers, one simple example. So they are supposed to fill in 60 applications per day, insurance applications onto the platform. By end of day one, they're barely able to put 30, which means next day morning they come in, they have 60 plus 30 backlog, 90 to go. So they're like, we don't want to use the system tomorrow morning. So in that release, the team of four of us and the backend team, we've done 36 straight hours to get the release into a place where they can use it. Because evening, we refix, we put back the solution, by nine it's ready, we get newer issues. So that's when I realized my biggest learning, and this is the first learning I had, is you cannot know everything. It's not like traditional learning, you don't have the right answers, there's no marks. There's always failure and experimentation through which you learn. And it's, it's impossible to know everything. What you need to know is how do you use the right set of skills, right set of tools, meaningfully, responsibly. So um, given these three, my other biggest uh, teacher has been the life itself. Life teaches you more lessons than what you learn in the classroom. Uh, for me, I really thank the opportunities I got to travel immensely when I worked with Tawan Technologies. I've worked in diverse cultures and that experience has broadened my views at life at large because having come from a very traditional upbringing, I think that was an eye-opener. And today also with MetLife, I'm working with so many people from diverse cultures. It's really helping me to grow myself. So look for any opportunities in life which actually teaches you a lot of lessons. Family relationships, for me, uh, my children, my parents, and a complete extended family, they've been an immense support. And in fact, if I've been inspired to learn and grow every day is my father, who has been an entrepreneur himself, struggling to bring up his industry all my growing years, and my husband, who has been a social entrepreneur, again, struggling to make it sur survive and succeed. So I've learned a lot from both of them. And if I have gone back to pushing myself to the next level each time I've taken a break, it's because my husband is challenging me and saying, don't sit at it, just move on, move to the next level. So uh, family makes a big difference. Um, eight years ago, I lost my sister to cancer, and that was a big step back for me. So she was my anchor, my soul strength. And having lost her actually brought in a big break to me because I had to drop off from career, support the family. And more than thinking about how to retrace my career path, it was how do I gain inner stability. So this is when I looked into working towards my inner journey, finding my purpose. And I think learning that society through music, I found some sort of a spiritual growth in myself. And that's been my true turning point because I've not just grown then professionally, I've grown emotionally, I've grown spiritually. As a human being, I was able to face the situation that I was in and take myself to the next level. In fact, it's helped me a lot to accept that while my path has not been the standard one, like how largely community defines, it's been the best one for me. And it got offered to me at the right time and I was ready for it. So I conclude here to tell you all, please build and cultivate the asset of learning to learn. By just doing that, you're going to be ready to thrive in any environment, face any challenges that comes your way and pick up every new opportunity that shows up. And with that, I think I also wish you all grow uh, and embrace the life's offerings to grow more as human beings, to be able to come back and give back to the society as better human beings. And here's to all of us, as lifelong journey of learners. And the only song that lingers right now in my mind is from Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara that Dere Lagi Lekin, Mene Apto Jina Cheers. Yeah.